Hey Globalites, welcome to Down Day Sunday, a weekly video series where I answer your questions, tell you about a recent story, and raffle off a postcard. And this week, Globalites, I'm at the airport because as of right now, today, when this is going to get posted, this is the last morning that I'm spending in Southeast Asia. And I just want to take a second this morning to not necessarily talk about like a post-mortem of Southeast Asia because we haven't even gotten to this. If you're just joining us on this channel, there's a huge backlog of Southeast Asia videos that I'm, I'm getting to, but I started the Down Day Sunday series so that I can be a little bit more closely connected to you real time. So I want to talk a little bit about um, how I'm feeling right now. I'm leaving a place that I've become so familiar with over the past 10 months, and now I'm going to some place I've never been to before. And quite frankly, I didn't do a ton of research and it's kind of scary. And I'm not going to get into my future plans just because I don't want to, you to get confused because I'm still in Vietnam in my vlogs. What I will say is that I'm, it's, it's nerve-wracking and I'm thinking a lot about things like what are, what's safety like in these places? What kinds of things do I need to do to protect myself? How do I avoid scams? Do I know enough information for me to figure out how to how to do things easily, am I not prepared? And it reminds me that a lot of you are going through the same thing. A lot of you came to my channel to learn more about Southeast Asia, to prepare for your own trips, to find out about things to do and uh, lessons learned and safety precautions and packing and all that stuff. And I think that realization is telling because like I was in your position before I came out here to Southeast Asia. You know, I consumed all the blogs and vlogs and learned as much as I could about being here. I mean, I've, I've been to Southeast Asia before, but I hadn't been to Thailand, I hadn't been to Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos. I hadn't been to a lot of countries. So I experienced a lot of new things while I was here. And one thing that coming out here taught me is that you can't fully prepare for the experience you're gonna have. And that might irk some of you like super planners who needs everything kind of laid out and like structured and you know super prepared and that might like be a relief to some of you people who just go with the flow and don't really care but honestly like more than 50 percent of what you're going to experience on the ground is not on the internet quite frankly. You're not going to know how you're going to feel when you're in a new environment. You're not going to really understand the cultural differences between where you come from and where you are now. And you're not going to quite frankly understand the luxuries that you have back at home or even the deficits that you have back at home until you go someplace and you actually experience it for yourself. And I'm trying to tell myself that right now so that I can calm down. Because while, yes, there's going to be a lot of new lessons learned in my future travels, and some of them might be hard lessons that are going to cause a little bit of frustration and potentially financial ramifications, you just got to go do it. You just got to go and, and see it. And, you know, yeah, of course, please, please come, please come back to this channel to get more information. And please research enough so that you're not just like a bumbling idiot when you get to the border or get to the airport. But you need to balance that with also just the fact that you can't prepare for everything and that's okay. You're going to be okay because hopefully you are mature enough that if you go on a trip, especially a long-term trip, you are ready for it. You're excited for it, you want to go do it, and uh, you're open to new experiences. So I'm heading off to new locations and I'm really excited about it and I can't wait to share this experience with you. Of course, again, we still have lots to catch up on with Vietnam, Laos, Thailand again, and Malaysia and Singapore and Bali. So many things, so stay tuned because uh, I'm not going anywhere from Southeast Asia on this channel. Okay, now it's time for your questions and I have to get through this really quickly because boarding is happening in like nine minutes. So let's just get right into it. This question comes from 94110 Omission. Excluding hotel, how much money should I be budgeting a day for travel specifically to, in Chiang Mai and then in Saigon? Without hotel specifically, you could budget $20 to have a very comfortable 
uh, even leisurely life. And if you want to go even more budget, I'd say you could probably go as low as $12. You really don't need to spend that much just to live. But if you want to do excursions and stuff, I would bump it up to 20. And then he also writes, I have three weeks coming up in Southeast Asia, but still don't know how to split my time. Should I do one week in Chiang Mai and then fly uh, to Vietnam for three weeks? Or two weeks, sorry. Or skip Thailand and spend three weeks in Vietnam? So I think if you only have three weeks, you should just go to one country and not spend money on the extra flights to go back and forth. If you really want to soak in a culture, just do one country. Now, you're asking, is Chiang Mai like, really that special? I think Chiang Mai is really that special, but it all depends on what you want. But spending time in just one country with just three weeks is just what I would do because I want to really soak in as much as possible when I'm in a place. And maybe you, maybe you want to see a whole bunch of things and maybe so it makes more sense for you to go to Chiang Mai to see to get a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It all depends on what you want. I would just say that three weeks is still not enough to see a lot of Vietnam. It's really not enough. Vietnam is a big, big country and unless you're flying everywhere, you're really not going to get a chance to see everything. So I would just take this opportunity to do what you want to do. I know it's really ambiguous, maybe a cop-out answer, but quite frankly, I just don't know what you specifically want out of your trip in Southeast Asia. And I, I'm guessing it's just to like engross yourself in the local culture. And if that's the case, I would spend more time in one single location than kind of go all over the place. But again, totally up to you, and maybe if this isn't a clear enough answer, just leave more details down below because I really don't know specifically what you're going after on your trip. But personally, me, I'd spend three weeks in Vietnam with the full knowledge that I will go back to Vietnam because it's so big and so incredible. Okay, that's all the time I have for questions, and I actually cannot do the raffle this week because everyone's boarding and I gotta get on that plane. So if you want to receive a postcard next week in next week's raffle, go ahead and leave a comment down below with the hashtag of the airport that you think I'm in right now. And let me give you a hint, it's a big international hub in Southeast Asia. So go for it, and you don't have to be right to win a postcard. Okay, thank you all so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and follow, and I'll see you in the next Down Day Sunday. And until then, get off the couch and go do great things. Bye!